Good morning, family. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's a new week from the time of this recording. We're starting fresh. So listen, today is a new day. Yesterday, for us and my family, give glory to God, right? I give glory to God for a good day. Amen. Sometimes when you have a good day, man, just praise God. Amen. That day was a purpose day, a planned day, a blessed day. Amen. And a day that God gifted us. So I'm so I'm blessed to have a good day yesterday. From the time of this recording, um, that would have been Sunday. Amen. So we're here in a new week, a new day, a new time. Amen. A new session, a new morning Devo. Amen. Today, we're getting into what we're calling Know the Truth. Know the Truth. Not only hear the truth, but know the truth. Literally. Christians, Christ followers, people who are born again, listen to me closely. Amen. And I'm talking to myself too, the man on the screen and the man behind the mic. We need to know and remember the truth that has been revealed to us in God's word. I repeat, we need to know and remember the truth that has been revealed to us in God's word. Because if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of craziness going on in the church world, right? There's a lot of Lunacy, a lot of disorder, a lot of, um, how you call it, delusion, a lot of um, foolishness going on. And if we're not careful, we could follow suit because we might not know and remember the truth that's revealed in God's word. We're going to be in 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 5 here on the Morning Devo. So if you have any questions... Comments, concerns, prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. That's what we're here for. That's what we do. Amen. And that's uh, the purpose, one of the purposes of this ministry is to connect uh, with like-minded people, with people who are seeking truth, not just seeking happiness. There's nothing wrong with seeking happiness and, and freedom and all that. Amen. But when you're seeking truth, you're going to run into the Lord Jesus, because he is the truth, the way, and the life. No man or any woman or anyone can get to the Father except through the Lord Jesus. That's facts, 100%, right? So let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds. Help me share this out. And on the other side of those 60 seconds, we'll get right into the word for today. Today, I'm calling this one, Know the Truth. Second Thessalonians chapter number 2, get ready. Three and five. If you're on live, that's so winners with a Z dot org. There's a live Bible right there um, from that website that you can follow along. Also, there's a live chat there as well. Also, so winners with a Z dot org. Seller Radio Network, the Lehigh Valley's number one urban gospel music station. We've been online since 2008. If you want to come check us out there, we're streaming live there right now, audio and video. And also, just you know, afterwards. Just hang out. Amen. Music plays 247. We have programs there and we have all kind of things that we have planned going on there. If you want to join the network, if you have a message in your heart and on your mind, amen, and you know it would edify and help the body of Christ, amen, connect with me at radio at sowinnerswithaz.org. We're starting to gear up for the spring into the summer um, so get this thing built up on the way the Lord wants to get it built up. Kevin, I see you, man. May the Lord... May the Holy Spirit give me understanding. God bless brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. You got it, bro. God, through the Holy Spirit, God, amen, will give you understanding, wisdom, and all that he has, and knowledge, amen, and a word of knowledge will come out of you, amen, when you get involved with these scriptures, and you already know that, right? So let's pray. After we pray, we'll share this out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. Amen. Um, the prayer that I had last week uh, from the family and a friend of mine, a brother in Christ, his dad uh, ha- had high blood pressure. Amen. Um, from what I'm hearing, he's out of the hospital. All glory to God. Amen. Prayer works. God is faithful and God is kind to his children. Amen. And he's merciful. So, Father God, thank you, Lord God, for today. Thank you for answered prayers. I thank you, Lord God, that you understand us even more than we understand ourselves. Thank you, Lord God, that we can know the truth and we can know that we're saved and we can know who you are because of your revealed word, because of your you reveal yourself through your word. And we thank you, Lord God, for your word. 
The Bible doesn't just contain the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. We call it holy scriptures um, because you, we know you are holy and you call us holy as well. I pray, Lord God, that we will know and remember the truth. Amen. And that we will be part of what you're doing in this world, in this time, in this day, in this moment of time. That we could share this gospel with somebody that needs the truth, that needs to be free, to be set free. Because your word says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. So I speak life. I speak increase in all areas of life, financially, relationally, faith, everything forward by the power of Holy Spirit, God. And I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to magnify yourself and continue to be our teacher, our chief rabbi, the chief cornerstone that involves yourself, Lord God, in every area of our lives. Thank you for guiding us, guarding us, protecting us. Thank you for health, strength, and protection. I pray that over my family daily, my whole bloodline from the very youngest family member to the very oldest. And I always pray over my friends and family on the other side of the screen and on the other side of this mic for them and their family and their household and their finances and their health, Lord God, that you would guide, guard, and protect them as well. In Jesus' holy name, we pray this by faith. And we all say amen and amen. So let's go for 60 seconds to um, share this out. When we come back, we'll get right into 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verses 3 and 5. I'll be right back. Amen, amen, we're back. So let's go for it. Let's see what this is all about. Because we know that we have a job to do here on this planet Earth, amen, while we're here. We're, we're farmers, fishers of men, right? And we plant seeds of eternal life everywhere we go, or we should be doing that. So knowing that we have that job, right? Remember the truth that has been revealed to us in God's word. God so graciously gave us this truth and he so graciously amen revealed himself to be the truth amen so let's see what the word has before i go any further with my notes because i believe this is of our lives every area when we have conversations about what we believe and who we believe in whose we are amen people want to know facts they want to know what we know Amen. And Holy Spirit God is amazing, right? He will remind us of everything that we have learned from the scriptures. And even he will even he would let us know things that we had not learned yet. I remember when, when I gave my life to the Lord, I didn't call on the name of Jesus. I can't I called on God, a God that I didn't even believe, I didn't understand, I didn't even know. And he knew my heart, so he knew I was calling upon the Lord Jesus, my Savior, right, to be saved and rescued. So God is always working all things for the good, for those who love him and are called by him. Amen. So we have what we need. We have the truth and we need to know the truth and remember the truth. And let me get this ready. Amen. For those who are just listening on the podcast, welcome back. So good to have you back on the Morning Devo. Amen. And I'm trying to build the blaze bible studies uh social media page amen trying to build that up too so i got some things in the works oh glory to god amen so let's go for it know the truth 
Amen. See that sign that the lady's holding up if you're if you're watching? Know the truth. So let's go. Second Thessalonians two, three and five. Let no one deceive you in any way. No one, man. Don't let it happen. There's a lot of liars out there. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Be careful. Don't let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he take his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Ouch, right? The Lord is saying, listen, be careful, but I already warned you. Be careful, but I already told you. Be careful, but you already know the truth. So if you're being deceived right now in any way, you know the truth, but you're not applying the truth. That's why I always say, don't just hear the word of God. The word of God says, do the word of God. Don't just know about Jesus, right, about him. Have a personal relationship with him. Why? Because it's a time coming. Rebellion comes first, the scripture says, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? We have Holy Spirit God reminding us of these things, helping us through these things, helping us know what's truth and what's a lie, helping us and revealing to us the word, the power, the authority, the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, everything that God has for us, he gave to us. Amen. He's not only, you know, waving his hand at us and saying, ah, you wish you had this. No, he gave it to us by way of Holy Spirit. If you're born again, if you're saved, amen, you know the truth. And don't let anybody deceive me and say, oh, there's no way of knowing if you're saved or not. No, that's not true. The Bible says you can know you're saved. You can know you're born again. You can know your destiny. You can know you're going to heaven. You can know the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. You can know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You can know that now before Amen. We leave this earth. And there's people around out there just trying to deceive us and say, no, that's impossible. You can't know. You know, it's like a, a gamble. No one knows. It's too risky. Don't bet your life on God or don't place your hopes and trust in God. And all these people are out there trying to snatch what God already put in us. And that's impossible. But if you know the truth and you know the one who gave you truth, the one who is the truth, you'll be free from deceiving spirits, deceiving people, deceptive people, deceptive systems. You'll be free from all of that because you know the truth. Amen. And I know the truth. And together um, we can move forward knowing that the truth makes us free. Truth makes us free. So what do you think? Amen. We have the scriptures on it. Let's have some more. In Mark chapter 13, because if you know what God revealed, you have to read the scripture for yourselves. I always say that. Why? Because there's a lot of deception out there. People are cherry picking the scriptures, formulating their own system and their own theology and their own way of preaching to benefit themselves more than we get the benefit from the scriptures. That's why to avoid all that deception, just read the scriptures for yourself. Mark 13 See, this thing's taking a little longer than usual. Mark 13, um, verse number 5. And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. See that? In other words, be careful. They're out there. Jesus charged his disciples, See to it that no one leads you astray. He presented it as our responsibility. Not God's responsibility. Our responsibility to be knowledgeable of the truth. So that we are not deceived by these false teachers and these liars out there. People who are trying to manipulate. Using the word of God, the very word that saved, the very word that has knowledge, wisdom, understanding, the very word that has power and authority. But they're twisting um, some of that. Amen. Because they know it's powerful. They know people will follow what they say. And if you 
if they seem to be knowledgeable enough or anointed enough, people will follow them, and even in error. And God doesn't want us to be in error. He wants us to be in the light. He doesn't want us to be in the darkness. He wants us to be in the truth. He doesn't want us to follow a lie. He wants us to follow His Spirit. He doesn't want you to follow an unholy spirit. He wants to follow us to follow a holy spirit, God. He's guiding us, leading us, so trust Him. Amen? If something doesn't seem right in your spirit, I say this all the time to people, test every spirit. Because if something doesn't seem right in your spirit, I don't care who the person is, who the ministry is, who the minister is. If something doesn't seem right in spirit, go to the scriptures, ask ask questions, amen, and make sure we're learning what we're supposed to be learning, amen. And you don't want to have to be in a place where you have to unlearn years and years and years of teaching that wasn't right. Uh, My name is written in the book of life, stamped and sealed. I am covered by the blood of the living sacrifice. We can't look back. Lot's wife is a great example of that. Yeah, you look back, you might become a pillow of salt. In other words, when she looked back, she forfeited the freedom that she was going to receive because she looked back at what was. And listen, I don't know why she looked back. It could have been because of fear. You know, you ever ran away from something and then you look back to make sure how far you were away from that something. Amen. But we do have an example that we're not supposed to look back. For whatever reason that happened to Lot's wife, um, you know, bottom line, don't look back. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. So when we see the Apostle Paul echoing the words of Jesus, because that's what Jesus was saying. So Apostle Paul was echoing the words of Jesus. Let no one deceive you in any way. Again, it's our responsibility, my responsibility, your responsibility to prevent to prevent yourself to be deceived. Amen. So if you're not careful, you know, anyone could, this could happen to anybody. If you're not careful because you trust maybe the people that you're learning from or the ministry that you're learning from, even me. That's why I tell you, read the word for yourself. Go to the word. Don't be deceived. If you trust somebody too much, amen, and you don't go to the word of God for yourself, that's your responsibility. Um, you know, I hear, I hear stories that people say I'm leaving this ministry or this house of worship or this church because I'm not getting fed. Well, um, if you're not getting fed, that means you're, I don't know, some, on some kind of spiritual diet. You're just eating from whatever's being said in the leadership or from the pulpit or from the stage or from the platform. And you're not eating for yourself. You're only getting fed maybe two or three times a week. Normally, if you physically just eat two, two or three times a week, of course, you're not going to feel like you're not being fed. You're going to be hungry all the time. So hunger and thirst for the word of God. And you could actually go for the word of God to the word of God for yourself. You don't have to rely on me and your pastor, your teacher, your apostle, your prophet, your evangelist, your pastor, teacher. You don't have to just rely on them. Amen. If you have anointed preachers and pastors and, and uh, Holy Ghost filled leadership, praise God. Give glory to God, amen, because you're in the right place. But that doesn't mean you stop there. You read the scriptures for yourself, amen. The gift of God's word is available to every single person, right? I believe whoever has a mobile device, whoever has a phone, whoever has a tablet, a computer, whatever, you know we can get the scriptures for free, right? And all types of versions and different languages, and we can get study Bibles and all that for free, right? Who would have thunk it? <laughs> is that a word? You can get it all for free. Amen. But I'm a Bible man. I have like five, six Bibles in here, all kind of I study Bibles, you know, because I, I like the written word, the pages. I like to go to that and look at it. Amen. Because online, even they're trying to, you know, change things. Amen. I'm trying to reach for my Bible. They're trying to change things online subtly, like you won't even notice it. So you always have to have on deck uh, the, the written word of God. Amen. You see, mine's, I got notes in front of it, I got all kind of scriptures. I got ministries that I'm praying for. Amen. Uh, a friend of mine from my ministry, this ministry here. Amen. Uh, went to be with the Lord. Um, he didn't go through COVID. Amen. COVID got him, but um, he's with the Lord for eternity. He was doing a great work overseas in his home country, in his homeland. Amen. And um, yeah, get the word. Man. Get this in you so that way you can speak it out. Amen. These scriptures, amen, are powerful. The word of God is still uh, the most 
powerful book ever written. 66 books that we have, but there's mention of other books by God himself. Amen. So whatever he revealed, amen, we need to know what we know. We need to know the truth, amen, and remember what God has revealed through his word. God revealed his word, and when he reveals himself through the word, we need to pay attention. So Paul, the apostle, was really addressing the confusion that was going on. The unrest that he was seeing from people who were being impacted um, by false teaching or deceptive spirits or people filled with deception, deceptive spirits. False teachers had somehow, however they do it, right, convinced many in the congregation that the day of the Lord was already upon them. Amen. People are still saying that. People still say that Jesus already came and left um, and the the end times are already upon us, like already happened, right? Some people are going around saying that the day of the Lord has already upon us, right? It's obvious that Paul had already taught them about end time events, and the scriptures talks about end time events. So certain things have to happen before the end, amen? But yet there's people around saying that we already experienced that, Right? And they sound convincing and they even point to scriptures, even though they're in error, but they can point to scriptures. And if you're not careful, if you don't know the truth and you don't remember what God's word revealed to us, revealed to you and to me, amen, we could fall into under that deception. He taught about the end times events when he was with them because he said, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, right? So besides Apostle Paul teaching them in person, Paul addressed these things. 1 Thessalonians, if you know the scripture, 1 Thessalonians 13, uh, verses, no, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, excuse me, I'm getting up ahead of myself. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, verses 13, um, 15, I think it is, let's see. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do have no hope. Verse 14, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from who the Lord that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep for the Lord himself will descend from heaven this is what's going to happen at the end time descend from heaven with the cry of command remember the trumpets that we spoke about last time with the voice of an archangel the angels dispatched and with the sound of the trumpet of God And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another another with these words. That's the truth, right? And anything outside of that, however people describe the end times, is deception. We got the revealed word. We got what we need to understand. Amen. I might not understand everything. Amen. But I trust the scriptures and I trust and rely on Holy Spirit to teach me what I don't know. Amen. Even the enemy can quote scripture. Absolutely. He has been quoting scripture um, since the beginning. Right. He knows he's been in the, in the presence of God. Amen. He was the, the serpent in the garden um, trying to say that God really say. Remember challenging the word of God. Tempting Jesus himself in the wilderness. Remember that? When he tempted Jesus with all kind of things. And the word is how God, through Jesus, worked that out. Amen? Because God knows who he is. Jesus knew who he was. And he knows the truth. And he is the truth. Good morning, Nando. Good morning. God bless you. Good to see you on the morning, Devo. So listen. We have what we need. We don't got to go cherry picking for scriptures or trying to make something up. Let's try to understand what we have revealed in the word of God first before we go to, you know, 
try to find missing books and try to understand Enoch and all these other things that might be a distraction. But let's see what we have in the written word of God, what we do have. Because it will take a million trillion years for us to understand the revealed word that God allowed us to see. First and foremost, that's why he's promised us eternal life, I believe, because it's going to take an eternity um, to know him. Amen. To find out what's going on. So apparently people forget or they misunderstand what the scriptures are are teaching. So in Paul's second letter and what we read in 2 Thessalonians, Paul repeated a previous teaching about two events that must occur before the day of the Lord. First, it's going to be a widespread rebellion against God. Sound familiar? A widespread rebellion against God. Not for God, against God. Mary Jealous, good morning. God bless you. Great word this morning. You're very welcome. Amen. All glory to God. First, a widespread rebellion against God will take place. And ladies and gentlemen, we can see that right now. Of course, people have been rebelling against the Lord since the beginning. But this revolt will truly be unprecedented. It's going to be next level. Next level rebellion. Next level hatred. Next level sin. Next level everything. And we're seeing that now. Amen. In our times. So get ready. So there's more indicators that a rebellion against God is the rebellion that will be revealing the man of lawlessness also known as the Antichrist. Amen. So none of this should make us fear. We just need to know. Know the truth and remember the revealed word. Right? Paul will look more closely at this figure later in his letter. If you, That's why I always tell you people, people to read everything. Amen. The whole chapter where we're studying from or where we're having the morning devo. So today we're in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So read the whole chapter for yourself. He goes on to explain more about it. Amen. And Paul is, of course, being inspired to write what he wrote by Holy Spirit God. So he knows what he's saying. He knows what he's talking about. So in short, we can't demand people to worship God. We can't command people to worship. Amen. We need to know what we know through the revealed word of God. And when you know the revealed word, you're going to want to express worship to God. You're not going to want to rebel against him. The flesh wants to rebel against the spirit of God. The flesh wants to do everything the world wants to do. But Holy Spirit living in us reminds us of this truth. And we want to. We want to follow the Lord and his truth. Amen. So there's more here. Uh, Maybe I'll do a part two. Amen. Because I have. Oh, not probably. I think I got through most of it. Amen. But hopefully you're getting what I'm saying. Know the truth. And remember the revealed word of God. God reveals certain things to us. Amen. And it gives us revelation, eyes to see and ears to listen. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Amen. Uh, man, keep me in prayer. I'll keep you in prayer. Amen. So let's pray for each other's family. Amen. So that way we could always know that we're connected by way of spirit. Right. So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.